Lakshvir, uh, a huge congratulations to you on the fame game uh, and welcome to you on Filmy Shilmi. Uh, thank you. Wonderful. So the series and your performance is receiving a lot of love and, you know, positive feedback. So how would you describe your emotions right now? Um, I, uh, I try not to think too much about it, to be honest, uh, because I feel uh, this is all part of the job, you know. I mean, when you, when you put yourself out there, people will obviously, I mean, some, some people will connect, some people will have different opinions, and uh, it's going to be, uh, I mean, of course, it's a little overwhelming because it's happening at such a huge scale for the first time for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, yeah, I try to keep my phone away, uh, just stick to my normal day-to-day -day and uh, think about the next project. Right. Now, for a lot of fresh actors, you know, they say that it only requires that one major breakthrough and then it opens up a plethora of opportunities. Uh, would you would it be right to say that the fame game is that moment for you where it has sort of completely broken the ice for you in terms of your career as well? Um, I feel that uh, it was already happening from before. I mean, I also had a very... Uh, a uh, good run with the film Milestone, which is also up on Netflix. Um, I think uh, if, if not, if, because it's an independent film, so of course, it might not have that viewership as, as Fame Game has because there's Madhuri Dixit and everyone else. Uh, but it still had uh, some very nice uh, uh, critical reviews and a lot of directors were already taking notice of my work. So I think uh, that, that kind of uh, a push has already happened to me about uh, probably a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, in terms of reaching to the audience and seeing how the audience at a larger scale reacts to my work, that has happened now for sure. Um, right. And uh, uh, and I think it's too early to, uh, I don't know, uh, what's the phrase, count my apples or whatever. I have, <laughs> I don't know what that phrase is. But uh, I think it's just about patience and uh, maybe more opportunities will come and we'll see how to go about it. Right. Now, in the series, you play the son of a superstar who battles with mental health issues and suppresses his sexuality. You know, he's com conflicted by uh, not just about himself, but I think the exterior factors around him. So as an actor, how do you approach such layered characters? Um, I, I think, uh, it, first of all, I the reason that I pick up a character is because it's layered. So all the characters that I would do uh, I would believe that every one of them has those, those layers throughout. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, it's about reading the script uh, over and over again. Um, I feel because you keep finding new things. And uh, I try to connect every character that I play with my own journey, uh, whatever I have experienced, and uh, uh, try to build it from there. Because I feel that is that's the only honest space that I can cater to, right? Because it's this a feeling that I have felt, and if I can represent that in a, at a different degree or or in a different manner, just mold it. I mean, that's where the craft comes in. And uh, if you if you're able to do that, then at least there's some more truth in it. Mm -hmm. It's not always necessary to go into the blind and try try very big things. I feel uh, it's in the simpler choices that the character lies sometimes. Right. Even I in complex scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess also given the nature of the subject your role explores, it must have been all the more important for you to maintain sensitivity as well. Absolutely. I mean, yes. Uh, but it's not something that I need to maintain. It's something that is inculcated in me. I mean, my performance is a representation of who I am as a person as well, uh, how I think of the society and people. Uh, so that sensitivity came. I mean, I have a lot of friends from the community uh, the whole LGBT care community and uh, I've never really had a moment where I've, I've disassociated myself with them even though I'm straight and heterosexual I've, I've, I don't think that has ever come in between the friendship that I share mm. uh, with all of us right? so that sensitivity was always there now it was just about playing a character I, I didn't see Avi as oh I'm playing a gay boy now I saw Avi as a person who's uh, struggling to come out and uh, has has a lot of um, ideas about the world and he's nervous about how people will accept me or he's very angry within himself. And it was more about playing that anger and frustration more than playing uh, playing gay or anything of that sort because I feel what 
at the end of the day, the central aspect of all of us uh, is is the emotions that we go through, you know. Mm. So I think that was more more important to me. I think it also raises awareness of mental health, as as I said as well, you know, um, because of what he goes through. And I think what it does, it also is a reminder that it is important to have people around you um, <clears throat> to reach out as well. So I guess that must have, you know, to portray, I guess, someone who suffers from a mental health issue. Uh, did you have to ever reflect on a time where you've been vulnerable emotionally and mentally too, Lakshmi, to bring out that that essence of the role? Absolutely. I mean, I have had a, I've had my own share of, of dealing with my mental health. Uh, you know, it's it's very strange because I feel it's it's a very common thing nowadays, uh, in, especially in, in 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 people my age or even younger than me, because of the social media and because of the uh, this pressure that people have of establishing who they are and their identity. You know, it's like saying that, oh, who am I? I need to portray this image of myself on. To the world and I really need to be out there and there's this pressure and I feel that pressure was also getting to me at some point of say of really trying to figure out who I am and uh, I feel that at some point you need to really take a break and, and say that it's okay things will take their own time uh, and of course the, the, the thing that helps the most are conversations that you have with the people you're closest to but at times you know uh, those are the most difficult conversations uh, yeah. even though I would say that I have, a, I have a very close relationship with my mother, but I cannot have that conversation with my mother um, in the first place because I'm so close to her. Because I feel that if I'm going through something and as I share it, it'll reach, it'll reach her in a way that she will also start going through it or she'll make her whole life about it. Uh, so uh, that is also a very tricky space. So, you know, you really have to gauge where you can have those conversations. That's why I'm a big believer in, in the idea of therapy and taking professional help. If anyone's going through a certain uh, a mental health crisis, I feel it's so important to, because we, the moment we have a fever, we, we run and call the doctor, right? Mm -hmm. Why not if we're ever feeling something off in terms of uh, either it's getting out of bed or it's, it's not being able to hold a conversation or it's not uh, being able to find the strength to go out and interact with people. I feel these are all things that you need to think about and, and really deal with as soon as you can because they can, uh, mind is a very tricky thing and it can really uh, turn around on you uh, yeah. very quickly. So I no, feel it's, it's Definitely. And I'm really glad. Thank you for saying that as well. I think it's very important. Um, but I think another moment that I really liked in the series uh, is when you're having a discussion with Anamika, when Avi is sitting with Anamika and uh, mm -hmm. she's describing uh, the life of a sex worker and um, she says for you, it's two minutes of joy, but for her, it's her lifetime. It's her, it's her rosy roti. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting how, again, um, the series addresses sort of, and voices, uh, you know, sex worker rights also, you know, in a very subtle way as well. I think it's quite ironic because we've just had Gangubai releasing, which again, sort of addresses mm -hmm. the same topic as well. So I guess it was, it must've been quite, uh, eye-opening for you right to kind of have this discussion a bit more even though it's through a fictional series but it must have been quite eye-opening for you as well right correct because absolutely i agree because there's, there's something that that we are lacking as a society right now is empathy uh i feel agree it's, it's severely lacking and i think wherever we can find that um, moment of or, or, or any example where uh, you know one can share that i mean the sex worker being one that how the society looks upon her. I mean, she's just doing her job. And as correctly as Anamika points out in the series as well, uh, it, it, we are kind of distancing ourselves further and further uh, these days. We are making categories. We are very happy in our groups, in our echo chambers. And uh, what that does is it creates that divide further, uh, you know. Uh, so uh, empathy plays a huge, huge role. And, and it's, whether it be the sex worker or, or anyone else uh, who one looks upon in a certain way, I think the best way to really uh, know a person is to go and have a conversation with them, which also Avi does after that. You know, she she says that you should ask her name, but it's not, Avi doesn't go and just goes and asks her name and comes, comes back, right? He, he goes and he asks certain questions about how she feels and how her family feels and how he feels. He shares that as well. So I think that's what empathy is all about. That's what what what's uh, what's going to break the 
the ice between people who come from different classes, different cultures, especially in a country like India, which is so uh, diverse uh, in its essence, you know. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, I've digressed from the question. No, 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 but it's true. It's, it's interesting because I feel I, like, you know, I, like yeah. I, I look at every scene, I start from what is being said, but I, I try to connect it to uh, a, a point at a larger scale because that's the whole, otherwise, why are you doing it? Why am I, exactly. why am I acting or why am I an artist right now? Why am I choosing something over the other? It's because of the ideas we believe in. So, yeah. And it's interesting as well, because I guess in a way, uh, uh, the, 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 the sex worker, um, she in a way was also marginalized, you know, just, I guess in a way mm -hmm. how Avi was. In, 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 in many ways, you know, emotionally and mentally, you know, from his family. So it's quite interesting how we saw that little connection there between them and that mm -hmm. little subplot that they weaved in. But I think it was really interesting to watch. Uh, and I think Madhuri Dixit obviously plays your mother uh, in the series. I mean, uh, I mean, Uska Nam Sunte, he made it like Jerry Piss smile at that. So for you to actually act in front of her, I mean, I cannot even imagine how that must have been. But I guess because you say you like to reflect on your actual life, you know, when it comes to playing various characters. Um, so how much uh, did you reflect on your actual relationship with your mother uh, to make sure that you, the bond between Avi and Anamika is portrayed authentically and organically? Um, I feel uh, it's very important to, um, uh, very difficult to explain it. I don't know how, but uh, it, it's the, it's when in the scenes when it's just her and me together, and the mother and son, uh, the energy is different, you know? So like I was trying to relate it to my family. When, whenever I'm sitting in my room with just my mother, there is a certain difference in my body language. There's a certain difference between, uh, if, even if my father steps in, things will change. It's only with my mother, there's some intimacy, you know? There is some kind of, uh, uh, relaxation in your in your being right uh, there's more honesty there's more vulnerability i can be more sharper and direct to her than anyone else uh, so i was trying to find uh, uh, those kind of similarities and actually what i also did was i actually stopped talking to my own mother during the period of the shoot because i told her that our relationship is so powerful that if i keep talking to you i will never be able to see a mother in 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 madhuri dikshit in anamika so for me to be able to do that, I really need to stay away from you. Uh, so it was very difficult to explain it to her. She was obviously not very happy with that idea. But uh, but I uh, so I actually didn't uh, speak to her for a really long time, and and I just kept thinking of Anamika as my mother. And whenever I would be on set, I would just go and sit sit next to her and just be there, not even have a conversation, but just be around her. So I really understand what her presence is, and I really am comfortable in that presence. I need I needed to really normalize the presence of Madhuri Dixit because if if I've I've done that at least I've I've reached uh, some kind of a uh, uh, some kind of honesty in terms of how a mother and son are together. So I think it was that presence I need to first I needed to first uh, take care of. Yeah, yeah, and I think I'm sure even for Madhuri ma'am as well because uh, I mean she's a wonderful mother in her real life too Absolutely. and. I yeah. think, and I'm sure for her, I'm sure that process must have been quite similar. I'm sure, I mean, that's something which I have to ask her eventually if I ever get to interview yeah, her. Yeah, she used to, uh, she used to, I mean, she was so, uh, it's, I can see where the experience comes in because she very quickly realized what I was doing and started helping me in my process, you know. Uh, yeah. That is what experience is. Uh, so she used to show me uh, videos of her son playing uh, the piano, the drums, and, uh, and, <sighs> used to tell, tell, tell me how, how she feels because Avi is also inclined towards music, right? Mm. Uh, so she sure. used to tell me how she feels when she listens to them and uh, how they are with her at home. Uh, you know, a uh, lot of anecdotes, a lot of stories. So uh, all of those things really helped. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I think, you know, uh, every time I, I speak with actors and I think even the series, it really makes a very tongue in cheek almost comment on nepotism <laughs> like there's literally that whole idea of uh, um of uh 
of of the daughter sort of going up to the mother and saying look i'm a star kid and nepotism and all of that it was quite i don't know it was it was quite amusing at the same time because we all have this conversation and to kind of see an actual star and a, a daughter even in a fictional setting to have that discussion was very interesting um but i think being an outsider uh, for you how i mean was it challenging for you to actually understand the pressures of a star kid uh, and the emotions they go through again that must have been quite a, um, an eye-opening experience for you because you got to understand the other side of, of fame, right? Yeah, I think uh, I think the script, first of all, was so comprehensive that it was constantly giving me uh, the knowledge of, of what it must be like to be surrounded by, say, media all the time or photographers all the time. And that's something that Avi hated. Uh, but I got lucky in a sense is that uh, I personally also hate attention. I I do not like it. I like to be on my own, uh, in my old world, in my own world. So I think that was something common between me and Avi, and that's why probably even when Sri saw the audition and uh, he saw me play Avi, he saw something different. He saw some. He he generally came up to me and said, "The way you did Avi, I didn't see anyone else. Everyone else was doing something similar, but then you came and you did something different." which is very surprising to me because I just went and did something without even thinking just the first thought that came to me of how Avi would be like because this someone who's, uh, who comes across as arrogant only because he wants to stay away from people and not talk to them or, or not talk a lot. Uh, I feel it was my life story. <laughs> so I just, uh, I think, yeah, I mean, uh, so I just felt that uh, that part connected to me very quickly. And I didn't try to, uh, as I said before, when you don't know something, you should not try and portray it. If I, I, I there, there had to be a thought when I say that I've never been the son of a star kid and I will never will be because our lives are set, right, already. So I'll just do what I know and try to, because at the end of the day, we're all human beings. We all, and all star kids are also kids first. I mean, that's what we, you ask them, you, if you ask, say, an Aryan Khan or whoever, are you a star kid? He, I mean, I don't think he will say star before saying that he, he, he was a kid first, right? Oh, they'll he hate the first. tag. They hate the tag. In fact, I've used it a couple yeah. of times. They're like, please don't use that tag. So, <laughs> Correct, correct. Because they're, they're, they're teenagers or they're whoever, I mean, ad adults as, as we all are. So I think it's very important. These, these tags come from the outside more than the inside. And I, I would have rather played away from the inside than the outside. So I think that kind of sums it up. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting because I think even through uh, Madhav also there was that there was a little interesting yeah. parallel there, which I'm hoping that if season two comes up or when season two comes up, I would be interested to see the little parallel between um, uh, Avi and uh, Madhav because Madhav <laughs> aspires to have what uh, in a way Avi has, you know, and I think that is something which I'm very interested in seeing hopefully in season two, uh, whenever mm -hmm. that releases, if it's releasing. Um, but, you know, so Lakshmi, I think your, so your first appearance, like you mentioned, was in a movie called Meal Patthar, Milestone, uh, in quite a, which is quite a mature role, which was celebrated at film festivals and it's streaming on Netflix. The guy who made, the person who made um, Sony has directed this as well. Yeah. Uh, and I saw the trailer and it looks incredible and I definitely will give it a watch. Um, but from the discussion that we're having today, it seems like you're a very self-aware and a very emotionally mature person. That's the sort of vibe I get from you, Lakshmi. Um, how important is it to have these vibes and to have these virtues when it comes to pursuing characters, regardless of which shade it is? You know, how important is emotional maturity and self-awareness? Um. I don't know. I, you say important I, as if I've chosen this. I, I feel this is something that has come in, come in my life. I don't know how. Maybe it's because books. Uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of, a lot of. I used to spend a lot of time with my grandparents when I was young. I really understood their sense of the world and even in their rhythm of life, and I really connected to it. So maybe the maturity has come from from there. Uh, I still read their books and they, they used to make notes in their books. So I read those notes as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I understand I'm not like uh, other people my age. Uh, I, I realized that very early on. And that's why school and a bit of college is very difficult for me. 
because it was very hard to explain uh, uh, people my age why I, I cannot I cannot be like them or why am I different or because you know sometimes you you uh, you said sometimes you have a certain personality but you don't know how to articulate it because you're not learned enough so yeah. that is a very difficult space because I am like a certain person but why I, even if I know I don't know how to articulate it. so that way school was a little difficult for me uh, mm-hmm. but uh, but it's not like uh, there are other people who are my age as well and i think with time people are the definition of what is mature and or what is the right age to be mature is also changing true uh, and i'm really glad it is because uh, because as society evolves people need to evolve with it right mm-hmm. so yeah i mean i i mean that's who i am and i don't know how to how to uh, explain myself <laughs> I get you. No, I really understand where you're coming from because you know, I, you know when you said that you were very different uh and you couldn't really explain why you were different uh, from the other people of the same age bracket as you. I have gone through that process myself. But you know one thing that I've realized like you is I I feel people who are sensitive, you know, because I would like to think you are a very sensitive being too. Um I feel like people mm-hmm. who are emotionally very aware, self-aware and sensitive too. I feel like we suffer a lot you know I feel like we go through a lot in terms of um fitting in uh people not accepting us it's almost like people fear that honesty you know yeah I I used to I used to tell my uh, acting teacher teacher he hated the word teacher but uh, <laughs> I, I think in my college yeah yeah because he he was a staff advisor for theater society cable uh and he taught me never to call him sir or any of because he said that it's important to look at each other as individuals first and you know not have a baggage of respect see if respect is earned with time and not from the first go by calling anyone sir or ma'am uh, I used to, uh, so there is a joke in players in my theater society and all the people who graduated from that society we we kind of sound similar often uh, that uh, you taught us how to be a human being but you really spoiled life for us wow so i mean we spot ignorance when we see it but the moment we contest it suddenly we lose relationship at times because uh, people you know people take it like why would you say that to me or why am i but it we have to understand that as a society we are sometimes ignorant and being ignorant is not wrong or it's not criminal but unless it has an action attached to it which is criminal uh be ignorant is something that you just need to acknowledge and check and improve upon uh sometimes we just forget that no one and we take it as an attack so i feel uh it's again it really boils down to conversation uh and i know it's difficult for sometimes sometimes it's difficult for for say me who who would spot it a little earlier than someone else to mm. bring it up because i'm with my closest friends at times and i really love that person but that person is of more something which might be problematic it's such a difficult situation that because you know how do you bring it up how do you how do you have that conversation because you, you really don't want to hurt that person because that person has meant something to you in your life uh but you still got to but you still have a conscience which says that you no know, but we have to talk about it uh so yeah it's it's hmm. not great uh, yeah. but it is, it is it's all about communication i think and i think that's the sort of era we're in it's all about communication um i think to be very honest uh for actors fresh actors like yourself for example i think it's great because we have platforms like netflix um you know which mm-hmm. provides a great scope uh for you know new actors and you know established actors to explore roles which they've never done before and it really does boost them in that way but at the same time you know we're in a in an era of noise there's so much shor sharaba you know in this world lakshvi social media pe halla gulla machta rehta hai it's just so difficult sometimes to just block out um that noise and just keep that focus in life you know and i think for you as an actor as well to keep that focus on craft so how do you you know cancel the noise outside and just keep that focus as an artist especially with with what's happening in the bollywood industry of recent as well Uh, i feel you really need to just see what really matters to you uh i, I at times you got to be selfish about you know of, of what you can take and what you can't take and uh, it, it's important to to be a part of the noise just as much to know what's going on and understand it but not let it affect you 
the moment that noise starts affecting you you will be a part of that noise very soon so you got to stay away from it you are not let it affect you but you still got to acknowledge that noise you cannot ignore it sometimes people in the garb of saying we need to be positive kind of suggest that we going to ignore the noise that cannot happen you got to understand and listen to that noise but you not you cannot let it affect you you cannot be a part of that noise so i think that distinction is what i always think of uh, so if there's something that's going on and everybody is talking about it i'll listen i will uh, involve myself into it just as much to know what's going on but not then say that oh i'm going to jump in and take a side as well no i can also have a thought which is not of a side you know we are so obsessed about taking sides these days sometimes it's okay to not take a side yaar yeah. sometimes it's okay to just say that you know there's parts of this that makes sense to me and parts of that that makes sense to me and i'm trying to figure out what what's correct what is right and wrong and that's the whole conversation and that is like no even old people who have gone through everything may not have answers and it's okay so uh, so yeah i think if that answers what what your question was right right and would you say it's that passion as well that you have towards your craft because obviously uh you know you've studied um in in delhi if i'm not wrong you you've had you've studied and stuff and you actively you know it was a very conscious decision on your part to pursue this career which is a very tough career yeah, very early on yeah very yeah. early on so i guess do you think it's because you had that 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 jazba to pursue this that is helping you maintain focus and I to just... block out the noise for me acting happened only because i didn't like my own life a lot i i loved the idea of playing different lives because it was an escape from my own boring life i felt that my life is not uh, i don't know sufficient uh, i need to i need to have more more life and i think that's where the passion came in and now it's at a point where i cannot live without acting if i if you tell me would you rather do any one thing Uh, and be as successful and have as much money and whatever uh, but a different kind of a job i would say no because uh, acting is all i got it really is uh, i do like a bit of direction as well whenever i want to take a break from acting because sometimes you know uh, what also helps my craft as an actor is that when i step back and look at things as a director i understand a few things a little more a little better uh, i have only done direction in theater i've never directed a film uh but that also kind of eventually helps me to take a few things and put it back into my acting so i do come back to it so that's what i so, so yeah i mean i'm really obsessed with acting <laughs> like that that's well i guess that's the, probably the one healthy obsession to have is with your passion for a craft you know i think that's probably the only obsession i would ever condone in life <laughs> to be honest I mean, so Yeah. yeah but let's see i don't know maybe in the future we'll know if it's okay or not <laughs> i will see <laughs> no 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 everything will be well but i think um what would you say is your dream role uh, and is there a particular style of character or style of cinema which you are very very keen on exploring no i am i don't have any dream role i don't have any particular style that i i just want to keep uh, trying different things and uh, keep noting what works and what doesn't work and maybe i think eventually if i've done enough different things i will then have oh okay i should do that and not this right now i feel it's a little too early for me to uh, start choosing and saying no not this and just that i feel uh, that kind of inhibits you and uh, you know with actors there's always a risk of mimicking yourself so that that shouldn't happen at all because i've seen senior actors talk about that i heard irfan talk about it and if someone like irfan khan also goes through such a thing then then i mean it's surely a big big problem right so i am i want to be very careful about not doing that uh, so i lead my uh, life and even my processes with the idea of what not to do rather than what i want to do uh, I, i don't know what i want to do i learn as we go along but i really know what i don't want to do sometimes so i think that's what leads every choice right uh, yeah Amazing. and i know on a final note that you uh you mentioned this uh but how has life changed for you post the fame game have you also had relatives who you might not have spoken with 
uh, who have come out of the woodworks now and realize how proud they are of you <laughs> or other friends who you haven't spoken with for years and suddenly they come on your DMs and be like, hey, you're doing good. <laughs> I mean, yes, of course, but I, I, I understand it, you know. It's, uh, in India, there is an obsession with acting and actors in, in the film world. So uh, even though uh, there might be another person my age in my family who's become a very good CA, but people will not reach out and message him. But because I have a particular series that's come out to the world and, and there is that, uh, you know, there is a certain way people look at actors as, as uh, only the famous ones, of course, not the, not the people who are struggling and trying to make it work. For them, that's like, uh, beta kuch aur kar lo. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, but yeah, of course, people are reaching out. And I would like to believe it's, it's coming from a good space. Uh, but as I said before, I don't think too much about it. It's, I, I appreciate their excitement. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that they're happy. Uh, they, I might do something tomorrow which they're not happy about and they'll again come and say, oh, this, you shouldn't have done this. Everyone will have an opinion about things. Today they're happy, tomorrow they might be not. So I want to stay away from it. I don't um, uh, bother myself with it too much. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't take it very seriously uh, right. because if, uh, for me, my journey is more important than anything else. Mm -hmm. So have you got anything lined up then after Fame Game or are you still exploring? Uh, yeah, I mean, there are a couple of projects that are lined up, uh, but uh, they're, at very, uh, they're, they're at early stages. So uh, I don't know how much I can share uh, as of now about them. Uh, but, but yeah, good couple of decent projects that I'm really looking forward to. Okay. Especially independent films, which I'm very looking, like, really looking forward to. Okay, so they're mostly independent films. I mean, is there like, a, or is there like an OTG sort of? No, there is a commercial series as well. There's a big scale Netflix uh, series as well, or might be. Um, but uh, but but yeah, I mean, uh, the the independent film is just happening next month, so that's much closer. That's why I said that. That's wonderful, and I think it's great as well. You know, Lakshmi, because you'll be that 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 rare actor who manages to. Um, you know, cement your presence, not just in mainstream, but also in independent. I mean, the fact that you are in, you know, works like Neil Patthar, I think it's it's incredible. I mean, I saw the trailer and I was completely floored by it. I mean, I, I honestly, I, ha I had heard of the film, but I never actually got to watch the trailer but and watch more about it because obviously just didn't get the chance to. But now that the fame game has come out and because of, of you, I'm really curious to see more works now. And I think that... Yeah, I'm I'm really glad, you know, and that's, that's my kind of an uh, idea that I've recently realized also what I can do is, you know, if, if I get a project like Same Game and I get so many eyeballs, I can redirect those eyeballs to, to filmmakers who, who really deserve them as well as, as Same Game does. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, if I can be somewhat of a mediator, I would, I would want to keep doing that because uh, there's nothing more beautiful than then working with different filmmakers who come with such uh, ideas and, and, and challenges and say that we'll figure it out ourselves. You know, there's some energy about that. It's so special. Uh, you want to be a part of it. And I think as an independent content creator myself uh, and as a journalist myself, I know how tough it is, you know, to literally yeah. come from grassroots and to literally carry yeah. your project on your shoulders because it's your baby right and you have to look Absolutely. after that baby you have to nurture it and I totally totally resonate with that but I think it goes kudos goes to you Lakshmi I think we are very lucky because we've seen another wonderful wonderful actor uh rising and upcoming uh and I'm really thrilled that we got to see you in the fame game and it's a great series on Netflix which is definitely getting a lot of eyeballs um, and I cannot wait to see more work from you and I'm super excited and hopefully we'll do more chats as well in the future absolutely whenever you want man uh, definitely I'm for it. absolutely looks but listen man wishing you all the very best and heartiest congratulations again thank and you, yeah keep rocking it thanks man thank you thanks so really. thank, thank you, you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lakshmi. Thank you, Lakshmi.